price just went up five bucks. Okay, now imagine a silver cartel, and you got some Chinese guy who's the director of the silver cartel. This is potentially dynamite for pushing up the silver price. Why they do it this way, but they have the gold in their in their balance sheet on the asset side and the revaluation account, which mirrors it on the liability side. The rule is you can't offset a liability with your gold. And for whatever reason, it's still valued at 35 bucks an ounce across all uh, of Europe, as an example, um, the Bretton Woods number. Now, I'm not sure I used to know. I mean, it's been so long that I, I why they moved the U.S. price up to 42.22. I don't remember exactly why, but suffice it to say, the official price in the United States is 42.22 on the books. It has broken enough stuff in the stock market to indicate that that asset category is now shifted to a negative long-term status, which is opposite to the major trends of gold and silver. They tend to be opposite. So if you look back and say, well, if the banks are going to crash again, wouldn't silver and gold crash? Well, go back and look at what happened in March through May of last year when the banks dropped 34 percent. I'd see where are my numbers here. Uh, gold was uh, jumped to $250 in the same time period. And silver went up $7. So it was totally beneficial to them. So I tend to expect that same response this time around in the monetary metals once the banks are triggered. So it's something to watch, especially starting next week. In today's news recap, uh, silver climbs 1.6% as geopolitical tensions grow. The price of precious metals grew on Monday as mounting geopolitical tensions appeared to have increased the appetite for safe haven assets. Ukrainian forces are confirmed to have made a surprise incursion into border regions in Russia last week, seemingly raising concerns about the further escalation of the conflict which started in February 2022. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky earlier noted that Kiev is awaiting approval from Washington, London, and Paris to use their long-range capabilities on Russian territory. Pentagon previously underlined that Ukraine's operation in Russia's Kursk region was consistent with Washington's policy. While Moscow ordered the evacuation of another region, Belgorod, near its border with Ukraine amid the growing turmoil. Silver rose 1.65% to trade at 27.90 an ounce. Gold added 0.36% to trade at $2,439. And other commodities like platinum also had modest gains. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video with a silver bug. Enjoy the episode. And, you know, you got the head of the Dutch National Bank who keeps talking about this. He keeps talking about um, revaluing gold. In fact, I want to, I think I can pull up here really quick. I think bear with me. I'm going to do this as fast as I can. Uh, I just read something today from it. He says, um, uh, let's see, the, the head of the, um, his name is Klaas Knott. And in October of 2022, he is the head governor of Dutch Central Bank. He said, the balance sheet of the Dutch Central Bank is solid because, make this bigger so I can actually read it, uh, is solid because we also have gold reserves and the gold revaluation account is more than 20 billion euros, which we may not count as equity, but it is there. Now, it's interesting to understand that when we talk about the revaluation account, um, that, you know, why do they give it that name, I guess, first and foremost? Why would they give it the name of a revaluation account if it wasn't something that they noticed? And and I think it's it's... It's option number four, right? And option number one for the Fed would be to inflate the way all governments have done. And option number two would be to default. Option number three I focused on for the last four years, and that was um, incite the world to no longer trust the United States, to no longer have a need to use the dollar for oil, to sign an executive order to go green, to stabilize the country, weaponize the dollar in the treasury market, and have everyone dump dollars. There's something called Operation Sandman that people should Google over 100 plus countries in theory. And I don't know how true this is or not, but Mike Adams sure thinks it is, and he's a smart guy, that they've all agreed at one point to uh, flip the switch. And and it would happen at night is the way that it's written down. Uh, the night of the switch, they call it, where 
in unison, they will all dump U.S. dollars in treasuries. Now, if all of a sudden Project Enbridge and the unit token get ratified and it comes out in October, I mean, it is not beyond the scope of my imagination to see that come to fruition. The slowly, little by little by little by little divestiture of dollars and treasuries, which we have seen, is positioning. And the accumulation of commodities like gold, which has doubled the performance of the 10-year treasury for 25 years with no counterparty risk, it's happening. So all of these countries, and we're supposed to be the United Kingdom, is, is now going to be the biggest purchaser of our treasuries, along with Ireland and the Cayman Islands. I got some oceanfront real estate to sell you in uh, Minneapolis, if you believe that that really is legit. Um, it's not legit. I mean, Jim Willie says they're paying them under the table. I don't care what it is. One broke nation buying the debt of another broke nation is just not really smart. And it shouldn't be even considered an asset. But it is, and it won't be the way things are going. It looks like the way that if indeed the unit comes about and, and you don't need to hold treasuries because gold is outperforming it with no counterparty risk and will be the primary component of a new settlement currency, you don't need to hold dollars either that are being inflated away by $100,000 a second. One, two, three, four. That's a trillion dollars every hundred days. A hundred grand a second has been pissed away and bankrupting your grandchildren and my children and all of these people that are working their tail off right now only to be indebted by, by uh, fiscal irresponsibility. So the dollars days are numbered ultimately as are the treasury. I do believe that. So as we talk about the gold revaluation account, to me, that's option number four. You just revalue the price of gold as high as it possibly can go uh, legitimately and, 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 and write off your debt. Now, even in the case of the US, it's pretty bad because every $4,000 increase in the price of gold, if we have 261 million ounces, would result in $1 trillion that could go free and clear into the treasury account, the TGA. So you raise it to $20,000, that only gives you $5 trillion free and clear to go into the treasury. And we're still, you know, we have $35 trillion in debt and $150 trillion in unfunded liabilities. So it's not a magic pill, but it certainly helps. Anyways, getting back to your point. Uh, uh, Trump spoke at the Bitcoin meeting, and right after he spoke at the Bitcoin meeting, uh, there was a lady who spoke, and her name, uh, Senator Cynthia Loomis was her name, and Cynthia Loomis proposed uh, funding the strategic Bitcoin reserve by partially revaluing the Federal Reserve's gold, and, and she wrote a bill to do this, and she's talking, I mean, so now you got the West talking about it. She says that... Um, Treasury Secretary, with no congressional approval needed, that would be our friend Janet, could instruct the Fed Chair Jerome to revalue U.S. official gold, which mechanically creates a deposit into the U.S. Treasury General Account, TGA, free and clear. The Treasury can spend uh, as it sees fit. And Senator Loomis's proposal is, is, is revaluing the gold and taking some of that excess money and using it to buy Bitcoin for a strategic uh, Bitcoin account. The point I want to get across is they know it's there. Now, the question is, is our gold really there? Is the 261 million ounces really there? It hasn't been audited for a very long time. But I find it ironic that they call it the gold revaluation account. And it's almost too ironic to not be applied. It, 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 again, too stupid to be stupid. I don't know. It just seems like they it's they have that in their back pocket. The potential formation of a silver cartel akin to OPEC for oil is a significant development discussed by financial expert Jim Willie. He envisions a scenario where coordinated output adjustments by major silver producing countries led by a Chinese director could significantly influence silver prices. Such a cartel could trigger price surges similar to those seen in the oil market following OPEC announcements. This concept, though speculative, underscores the strategic moves within the global commodities market. How many times have you seen the oil price move based on comments by the OPEC director? Well, we're considering an oil um, reduction in output in the Gulf region. Uh-oh, the oil price just went up five bucks. Okay, now imagine a silver cartel and you got some Chinese guy who's the director of the silver cartel. And I don't know what they're gonna call it, but then he comes out with a statement, I'm talking like 18 months down the road, Chris. 
comes out with a statement like, well, <clears throat> we're thinking about um, Mexico and Chile reducing by 10% their silver output. And the silver price goes up $2. If it happened for oil with respect to OPEC, it could happen with silver with respect to a new silver cartel. This is potentially dynamite for pushing up the silver price. Imagine they say, well, okay, and, and you know, Mexico is all over the news. They're, they're talking about, um, and, and the Supreme Court has got to settle on this. It, it's a, uh, a restriction on foreign direct investment to the mining industry. Um, and it's not approved, but just having it floated and potential, it's brought about a 60%, 60 percent, six zero, 60 percent decline in foreign investment in Mexican mines. Okay. So they're going to see a reduction in the future months for output. Okay, I'm telling you, this silver cartel is going to be a big item. And I'm watching it, and there's not much news with the silver price. <clears throat> and India and China are really angry. India and China are building out solar farms. Uh, in the United States, it's largely California. And I I've had two, <clears throat> I'll tell you, my consult, Consult calls are very valuable. I had an o Ohio client and I had a Virginia client, each one reporting rather expansive solar farms in those states, Ohio and Virginia, called PV, photovoltaic, PV. The PV cell is, is had two or three rather impressive developments, uh, improvements in the last couple of years, maybe three or four years. And, and what's really remarkable, Chris, is it does not bring about less silver. <laughs> it brings about more efficiency and the motivation to do more silver, <laughs> to do more panels, more volume, maybe a little bit less silver within, like they're, they're calling it a square meter. Um, that, that, that how much silver per square meter, how many, how many watts is produced per meter, square meter. Uh, it's really quite interesting, but the developments are not bringing about a lower volume of silver demand. It's, it's more. In today's news recap, a geopolitical tensions drive silver prices higher, more gains ahead. Silver price showed an upward trend, reaching an intraday high of $27.57 an ounce. Geopolitical tensions and expectations of Federal Reserve rate cuts have bolstered silver prices. Conflicts in the Middle East have heightened concerns of a broader regional conflict, supporting safe haven assets like silver. Anticipated Fed rate cuts have further boosted silver's price. However, the upward momentum may be challenged by positive risk sentiment and a strong U.S. dollar, which typically limits silver's gains. U.S. dollar strengthens amid inflation data and Fed rate cut expectations. The U.S. dollar is gaining strength despite market expectations of a 25 basis point Fed rate cut in September, with some anticipating a larger 50 basis point cut. This dollar strength is likely driven by anticipation of upcoming U.S. inflation data. However, this boost may be short-lived due to the expected rate cut and overall optimistic market sentiment. In a risk-on environment where investors are more willing to take risks, safe haven assets like the U.S. dollar typically face challenges. Despite various factors supporting the dollar and preventing significant declines, Fed Governor Michelle Bowman noted on Sunday that the Fed might not be ready to cut rates in September, citing inflation risks and a strong labor market. However, this has not significantly boosted the U.S. dollar or impacted silver prices. Looking ahead, investors are cautiously awaiting key U.S. inflation data before making major decisions on silver. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with a silver bug. Now, or, the, or just sentiment in the stock market. Remember, that that's moved a lot by sentiment, not just so much data points. But I'm sure data points would be affected. I mean, if you're running a company uh, and you have one 
economic data points that are coming down and you're th- you're not an economist, but you run your company and you're either going to hire new workers or lay some off or not hire any more or cut your production capability and not build a new factory, et cetera. All these variables outside that we're talking about, like, you know, political uncertainty, uh, data points that are getting worse would cause you to have an economic consequence down the road if these things started to happen. So, yeah, it could be. But I think the main thing is the emotional impact uh, on voters who, you know, when they're in the stock market, you, you don't want to have some dark cloud out there that is uncertain in terms of its wave effects. You know, what do you want to do? Well, you want to stay speculatively long or do you want to lighten up your portfolio and go to cash or go to bullion? You know, uh, and this is a, a variable, I think, that would assist the monetary metals again, because as you enter a period of uncertainty, this is also a factor that would impact the Fed decision. Oh, no, they don't talk about politics. You know, they they don't they swear that's true. OK, but, but uncertainty caused by politics. And its impact on economic data points, they'll be fully aware of that. And so if the Fed starts panicking because the bank sector starts to break in the next week or so, that's just the beginning. Uh, sentiment can go from you know light to dark overnight, and uh, suddenly, if you have a fear factor, what what are you going to buy? And I, I suggest to people that they stand back and you know, yeah, silver's weaker than gold now, yeah, and we think that's caused by the stock market break recently. Well, we argue not. We think it's just the silver behaves like a wild dog. But look at the other variables out there that if they engage. And you want a sense of certainty in your life. What do most people want to get into? Well, look at the portfolio action of like Newmont Mining. You know, Stanley Druckenmiller back in fe- mid-February, probably laughing, laughed by you know, other asset managers when it had bought a ton of Newmont Mining, you know, and dumped a bunch of big name tech stocks. But it was a little early. The market didn't top out then. It was Mar- it were February, March. Market didn't peak till last month. So look, he probably missed something on the tech stocks. But he bought Newmont R- Mining around thirty-two dollars. Right now, on a dip, it's at forty-seven. How come it's doing so well? If the stock market's starting to wobble, how come Newmont's hanging around its recent high, which is dramatically off its February, March low? Uh, it's a blue chip, the big blue chip. Uh, how come gold's hanging around quietly, one uh, percent off its all-time high weekly close? Somebody's buying it. So, and I think part of the reason for that is not just foreign governments we know are buying gold, but I think there's a rise in domestic consumption of that too, uh, where there's a sense of uncertainty, and asset managers here are looking for something that isn't going down. And if you start to break the stock market more, the more and more of them will start to look for something that isn't going down. Doesn't have to be going up. Just look steady. Uh, and T bonds are one of those that we called recently. The sharp upside there, drop in yields on the long dated end of that market. And the monetary metals, I think, are hanging in tough. Except silver is the wild dog, of course. But uh, I think that as these events start to unfold, that's where money's going to go. And so it's hard to calculate what that political variable is, but it's got to be, I think it'll be net positive for gold and net negative for certain other assets. Where can be- What do you think of Andy's take? Do you think gold and silver price manipulation will end up soon with prices soaring to record highs, or do you disagree with him? Post in the comment section your price prediction for silver by the end of the year, and share with the stackers your exit strategy or buying levels. Me, personally, I'd be looking forward to unwind a significant portion of my silver at $50 and would be selling all my stack if we get past $100. Now watch this video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I'll see you on the other side.